Now, one thing that stands out with LinkedIn and what I've learned is where most people make the mistake, they, they use it as a social media platform. It is a social media platform, but it's a marketing tool. And if you use it in the right way, it just become easy. Now, I'm not going to bore you with a very lengthy presentation. I just want to give you an overview of um, what it is that we've learned and how we actually implement a LinkedIn done for you service um, for our clients. What we discovered is LinkedIn is in fact a funnel. Um, and if you look at the technology, LinkedIn shows you, you know, this is how they've designed LinkedIn and this is how you in actual fact should use it. Because as you know, when you open up your LinkedIn account, you always get a profile. Yeah. Now, the purpose of the profile is to position you as a thought leader, an expert, a specialist, a guru, uh, purely because people buy from people. They don't buy from a business or a brand. And the whole idea behind the profile is that you... Um, build a no like and trust relationship with your connections. Now, where the majority of people go wrong in LinkedIn is a vast majority of people on LinkedIn is what I call onlookers. They don't engage with your content. They don't respond to your messages. So what people do is they keep on connecting and try and find people that will talk to them. But in fact, what LinkedIn has done is they've given us the opportunity to position your business as a brand leader by opening up a LinkedIn page. Right. So the whole idea is that as you build no like and trust relationship with your connections, you then take those connections and push them down to your LinkedIn page which then positions your business as a brand leader. Now, it makes sense that if you, on the one end, are building a no-like trust relationship, positioning yourself as the expert, and on the other end, you position your business as a brand leader, it's almost like a double whammy. You know, they get double messages and so on. And this is the power of LinkedIn as a marketing tool because you never waste time and effort. Uh, by building relationships with the wrong people or people that won't respond because there's a method to get them to respond. And then lastly, um, LinkedIn has created the group scenario. Now, it's a very controversial subject in LinkedIn because the majority of people view it as a waste of time. But it is, in fact, one of the most powerful online networking tools available today. Because what you do with your group is as you build relationships through your profile and page, you push them into this online networking entity. And the whole idea is that a group of like-minded professionals um, start a conversation on a very specific topic. Now, think in your case with all of the coaches. If you get all of the coaches into a group and all of the coaches get their um, clients, their prospects, their leads into the group and everybody is starting to talk about a conversation, it just becomes so much easier to manage everything. So yep. this is the lead generation process that we've discovered. And I've drawn the funnel in this way because at any point in time, you can start generating leads, either on profile page or group level. And if you sit with those sticky onlookers, by the time they get into the group, you become part of this net online networking forum, you start generating leads. And what makes it powerful is that a lead is then someone that knows, like, and trusts you. So the sales process becomes a mere nudge at the end of the day.
Now, in our LinkedIn Done For You service, we build these funnels for our clients. So the first step is always to get the foundation elements correct. So we optimize the profile with the right keywords and hashtags and layouts. Then we optimize the page and create the group. On top of the foundation, we then build this funnel system. And the funnel system is very simply uh, a couple of steps. We first connect or reconnect with your first and second connections. Once they accept or respond, we welcome them and start the, uh, the relationship process. And then we introduce you as a thought leader through content. Now, the first three steps is always the profile layer because that is the most important part of the whole system is to establish you as a thought leader, as an expert. Once we've established the relationship, we can then move them down to the page, introducing your business as a brand leader. And then we create the online networking scenario. We control this funnel uh, by excluding uh, people we don't want to market to. Either they've gone through the, the uh, funnel already or either it is not our idle clients. We reply to any responses we get either on profile page or group level. When somebody shows interest, doesn't matter where they are in the funnel, we then ask for their contact details because to us a lead is not a connection, it's a relationship that's been formed. So we always ask for the contact details, a telephone number, an email address, and then we generate the lead. So this is how the system works. Easier would be to show you how it works in LinkedIn itself. So we use Sales Navigator to build this funnel. So what we do is we create this lead list. Now remember, I have optimized the profile page and the group. So that layer has been established. So what we do is we create the, um, the funnel using Sales Navigator. Now I'm just gonna use the second connections as an example. So as we work our clients' accounts, we start building a database of second connections that we want to reach out to because we want to get new blood in and grow the account. And then we send out connection invites on a daily basis. And once we send out the invite, it will then fall into a welcome list. Now, the welcome list is always empty because the minute we get a um, acceptance of an invite or a response to a, a reconnect, we will start the relationship by welcoming them into the network. Then we uh, introduce them to a piece of content that we have so that we can establish our client as a thought leader. Once we've done that, we then move them over to the page. And I don't work my account, my team does. So sometimes I look for these things, but once uh, we've we introduce them as a thought leader. They, we move them into the page and introduce them to the content on the page and um, introduce the business as a brand leader. And then we start building their online community for them in the group. Now, as I said, we control the whole funnel through either excluding people that we don't want to market to or we... Uh, 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 will reply to people that at any stage in the funnel ask questions and so on. If we get someone that reach out and say um, they're interested, they want to have a meeting, they want more information, we put them in a call to action list where we wait for the contact details. And as you can see, I, I have currently 12 leads that's coming my way. So I know at any point in time how many leads I'm going to get. Once they give us the details, we then put them into a leads list. Now, in marketing CX's case, 
we put them into a CRM. For our clients, we normally email them the lead and we provide them with all of the details, the telephone number, the email address, their LinkedIn URL, plus the entire conversation so that um, our clients can see how the, the conversation was built and how did we derive at um, this person being a lead. So when he takes over, he knows exactly what was said, what was agreed, how did we get to the meeting, what is the expectations and so on. So we provide our clients with all of that. So as you can see, Mark, this means that you are in control at all times because you know with every single connection where you are with the relationship um, management process and where this uh, connection is within the funnel. So you know how far you are from generating a lead with this person, which means that lead generation then becomes predictable. So you can predict how many leads you're going to get uh, at any point in time, which makes it far more controllable. So once we've built all of this, it now becomes easy because, and if I, if I refresh my screen, you'll see my video comes up. There I go. Wow. Okay. So, so now we've built the foundation, we've built the funnel, everything is ready. So all we now do is we go and do specific activities on our client's account so that we can fill the funnel. And that is where our focus is. We always start with content. Um, it revolves around content. I very fondly say that um, content is the universal language of the online world. That's how we speak to people, through content. I'm very fond of doing these little slideshows. We do it for, for marketing sex and our clients as well, because it's just little snippets of information that adds huge value. Because of the structure that we have with the funnel, we don't have to spam people or, be, uh, or come across as salesy or damage a brand by looking desperate with buy my stuff kind of messages. We just focus on adding huge value by doing little um, uh, slideshows like this. And we do it for our clients as well. And we get a huge amount of traction on these kind of um, slideshows, but we do normal post articles and those kinds of things as well. But what I want you to see is my core focus, my flagship product is a LinkedIn done for you service. But this one doesn't say it. Neither does this one or this one, because the focus is on building a relationship and adding value to that relationship. Because at some point in time, if I go and I add a variety of content and um, create conversation, the person is going to turn around and say, this is awesome, but who is Tilly? And when they click on my profile, on my name, my profile sells for me. I don't have to. The profile layout is done in such a way that it takes care of providing the um, profile visitor with all of my information. So the structures we put in place in the beginning sells for us. And when they get to my page, my page is set up in the same way so that uh, my page sells for me and my, my page content sells for me. So the focus here is building relationships all the time. Now, on top of all of this and focusing on building the funnel and keeping the funnel going, we normally run three campaigns for our clients as well. Uh, we do a growth campaign, a nurture campaign, and an engagement campaign. Now, we always grow our clients' connections 
um, through the network. Now, when we grow our clients' connections, because we focus on building relationships, we do inbound and outbound marketing. So because there's a limit of 100 invites per week, we focus a lot on attracting people to us. And you can just see my team works, my account. This is just what happened overnight on my account, um, where we attract people because if we can get them to connect with us, we save credits. So we can connect with more and more people this way and, and grow the accounts faster this way. The other one that we do is we do the notification. So we will go into the notifications and as LinkedIn notifies us what's happening in the connections, in our connections, we will engage with them uh, for our clients and make sure that we continue building the relationships. And then with the nurturing, we also do the messaging. Now, this is an area where most people complain because they say they don't get um, responses. We use a four-in-one methodology and as you can see, this just happened overnight. My team hasn't started on my account yet and we get a lot of responses. I can get anything between 30 to 40 responses on my messages a day. So we get a lot of responses that way. We also do engagement. So the obvious focus is the, the home feed on LinkedIn. However, it's becoming very salesy and very Facebooky like So what we do for our clients is we teach the algorithms um, of LinkedIn what we want to see and what we don't want to see. So we do this for the clients all the time. If we see posts that we is not going to be helpful in building relationships and filling the funnel, um, we just go in and say, we don't wanna see this. Now, this could be a time consuming exercise, um, but Sales Navigator is far more on target because what in Sales Navigator, we can tell Sales Navigator who is our ideal clients. So we go into Sales Navigator, set it up for our clients, and then the alerts that we get is totally on target. It is people that we want to engage with, that we want to build relationships with, that we want to push towards the funnel. So those are the, the three major campaigns that we run. And then obviously, as I showed you with the group, and I like to use this one as an example, um, Step Into the Spotlight is a group that's been featured in the Huffington Post because of its effectiveness. And it's always used as an example of this powerful online networking tool that you get. Um, now, Step Into the Spotlight is run by Tuffet and Carol. But I want, what I want you to see is the members is the one that's posting because you create the conversation and so on. Now, if you think about all of the coaches that you have and so on, um, there's very specific ways. And as you go through, you can see the kind of engagement that they get on the group um, and so on. We also do group work for um our clients where we would go into Sales Navigator and we will find um, three groups. And what we do with our clients is in the three groups, and the way we do it is we look at groups and where is most of their ideal clients. And we then go and position our clients as thought leaders in those groups. And that is how I attract so many people to want to connect with me is positioning the client as a thought leader in that group. So this is basically then the LinkedIn done for you service and everything that we do for our clients. On average, we spend, um, we're a team of eight at the moment. On average, we spend about six hours a day on a client's account doing just that. Now, wow. 
unless you want me to stop for questions, I can just show you how we do the content because I we touched on it. Uh, we touched on it telephonically. The content that we do, and I actually went to ask permission if I can use this client. We do a roadmap. You see, the thing with content on LinkedIn, it's not about you. It's not about your products and services. It's about them. It's about their pain points and the solutions they're looking for. So we, we've got a methodology where we use a five-step roadmap. And we always start off with this. So what we need to determine upfront is we need to determine what is the pain points, what is the solution, so that we can focus our content on them, so that we write stuff that people want to see, want to read, and it's going to add most value. So the five-step process is very simple. We first define the, pro the persona. So who is the people that you that is your ideal client? Um, we normally uh, don't go beyond four because otherwise it gets crazy and it is, you know, it loses its value. Um, we look at each one of the personas. What is their role? What is their role in the, the purchase decision? What is their goals? What is their challenges? What is the questions they ask? What is the solutions that you offer? And what is your role in that solution and how important is it? Um, the second step is once we understand your ideal client and what it is that they want, we then go in and say, what is it that we want them to do? So if we write content, what is it that they want? We, we expect them to do once we publish this content because we can't manage what we can't measure and we can't measure what we can't manage. So we want to know that the content that we're writing is going to be effective. So upfront, we, we put in the measurements of how we're going to do that. Then we use the, the HubSpot flywheel. So the customer journey is going to be attract, engage, and delight. So this is the, the journey that we're going to use with our content so that we can move the client through um, the connections on LinkedIn through a very specific path um, so that the content has a role. And then we take each one of the personas and we say, how are we going to move? And this becomes like a little snack. So we say, how are we going to move them from attract to engage to delight? What is the questions they're going to ask? What is the kind of topics that's going to move them through this whole scenario? In step four, we look at a bird's eye view of talking points. What do we have? And if there's anything that we feel that we should add, then we can add it to here. And then in step five, we have talking points. Now, what I need you to understand, the talking points, not a topic. I can get 10 topics out of one talking point or even more. Now, as you can see, if, if your coaches is going to write, they can take specific talking points that is going to be um, relevant to their skill set, their knowledge, their information and elaborate on that. And then one can also marry that with the marketing strategies that we're following in LinkedIn and make sure that everything goes in sync. Because what we do, once we've got the talking points, we have a content strategy planner. Now the planner works as such. I'm just gonna show you, we've got the profile, the page and the content, the, the group. So what we do is um, in this, we have the data. So we would go and say specifically, 
what is the content ideas, what is the type of content, what is the objective, and we've got some guidelines on hashtags that we want to use. Any links that we want to use, keywords, and so on. And then as we start writing, we put it in here so that um, the client can see what we are going to write. Now, some of the posts that we write is articles that the clients provide us. Sometimes some of our clients uh, provide us with voice notes that they leave on, on WhatsApp. Uh, some clients give us videos and so on. We just put it into LinkedIn. I call it LinkedInese so that yeah. it is uh, a, a proper story around it. Um, the last thing I want to show you around the LinkedIn done for your service, every one of our clients gets access to their analytics. Because you see, the thing that we do is, it is a partnership. Every single one of our clients get access to a directory like this. So you can upload images, look at the content we're writing, look at the messaging we're using. And if you want to change things, you can change things. If you want to upload things, if you want to query things. So it's like a partnership. We work very closely together. And in the same way, we use a centralized reporting system. So at any point in time, you can go in and see how your profile is performing, how your account is growing, and so on. And this is live, online, and so on. So you don't have to wait for feedback from us. At the same time, we also measure the content. So we always drive towards 2 to 5% engagement rate because that is industry standard. And we then monitor the content to make sure that we are on target. So we can see now the lifespan of content on LinkedIn is nine months. So we just keep on looking if the content is still performing and still getting engagement. We can also see if we're on target. So are we getting the interest of the right companies? Um, what is the titles of the people that's viewing it? So that we can make sure we're on target. If we find we're not on target, we will go back to the roadmap and say, where did we miss the boat? How can we realign this? Because we need to be on target. And also, are we in the right um, location? Because it's no use if our focus is on London, but everything comes from Timbuktu, then it's not going to work either. So I think the clarity of the whole thing is That's how we manage the content, how we manage the accounts. If you work with insight and you know what you're doing, then everything becomes controllable and predictable. Jeez, it's, a, it's fascinating how much more there is to LinkedIn than what meets the eye. I'm, I'm blown away by what I've seen. And I'm actually speechless almost in some some aspect. Um, 